Hey everyone, my name is Anthony Wright. This is my wife Chandra, and we are the pastors of Just Christ Ministries. We are so excited you have decided to join us for this worship experience. We're a church designed with the community in mind, working on the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you again for joining us. Let's go into service. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Um, I pray that everybody's had an amazing day, that it's been blessed, and that you're ready for the word. So I don't have the iPad. I'm not able to see your names and everything, but those of us who are joining us online, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Pastor Wright has some things that he needs to get care for this evening. So you guys got me and Sister Freda. Awesome. So we have a couple of announcements I want to share with you. If you have a child ages 8 to 18 that are interested in boxing, double dutch, media, or basketball, um, also we have trauma-informed groups, you can sign them up for the HOPE program um, in person or online. In person, it's 70. 70- 445 South South Chicago Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60619. And if you'd like to sign your child up, I want to call them scholars. Online, you can do that at rohchicago.org. Also, we're super excited to share um, this upcoming leadership training that we're going to be indulging in in um, May. It'll be May 14th, 2022. Um, we have an amazing young lady who's going to come and and do some leadership with our young people as well as our teens and adults. Super excited about that. Um, she actually works with John Maxwell. Um, she'll be here on that Saturday working with our kids from about 1230 to 115 and then we'll break a little bit and she'll go into training with um, our teens and our adults. And so if you're interested, please, please, please mark calendar save the date it's going to be an amazing day we'll have some amazing snacks for you guys to come and just dive into so i'm really really excited about that i appreciate you guys and um we're going to get into a little worship freda you have a favorite song that you might want to just share with the people i didn't know we were doing praise and worship that's exciting welcome me back to the to the microphone amen go for it i i will i uh no i don't have anything welcome into this place mm-hmm. welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people so we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this road. Vessel, you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts. So we lift our hands. As we lift our hearts, as we offer up 
this praise unto your name. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap Come of on praise into this because place. he is worthy to be praised. So you know, you, we guys, yes. we're in our series, Sharing Personal Keys to Success. Tonight, Freda is our amazing guest, and she has an amazing testimony that you do not want to miss. Um, I'm so proud of her. She's done some amazing things tip my hat. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. Um, so she's going to be on tonight, just sharing some of the things she's experienced, how God has used her, how God has blessed her. And so we're going to let her, um, be free tonight. You guys maybe get you some paper and pens because it might actually speak to your heart. It might be some things that resonate with you that you can apply in your own life. Right. Um, so Freda is a member of Just Christ Ministry. She is part of, she is the president of our board um, of directors. And I am super, super excited. You want to share a little bit about yourself with the people? Sure, sure. So thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I cannot think of a better way, first of all, to spend my birthday. So actual birthday. Happy birthday to Uh-huh. Happy birthday to you should not have given both of us a mic. Both of us with a microphone. Happy it's not a good idea. Happy birthday to you. Uh -huh. It's amazing. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. To me, to me. Happy birthday. 49 and doing fine. Happy birthday. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Come on, give God. It's all right to celebrate, right? It is. It is. And I'm and, and so then, excited. And for her to even take this. Freda likes to celebrate her birthday, okay? <laughs> so for her to be here on a Wednesday night sharing with us. Such a blessing, a gift to it us was, when you was. should be the one receiving the and gift. I, and thank I, and you. I definitely have the gift, the gift of life. So yes. I thank God for that. Another day, um, another birthday to celebrate. So I'm really excited about that. And, you know, when Pastor asked me to um, assist with Bible study, um, I just immediately said yes. And he was like, it's on next Wednesday. And I just said, <laughs> of course it is. My because <laughs> Why would God not do that any differently? I have found him to be such a comedian in my life. Yes. I don't know about you. Um, but that was, yeah, definitely something very interesting to me. I said, yeah, this is definitely going to happen. Uh -huh. um, so I was excited about the series and the, the topic um, and thinking about those keys to success. Uh -huh. I've had the pleasure of the last couple of days of spending some time with my mother. Awesome. And if anybody knows her, she is like, you know, biblically equipped to have this conversation. Um, so we've been talking on the last couple of days about just like the keys to success mm -hmm. and what makes you successful and how do you define success in that process. Um, and so I just thought this would be a good opportunity for us to come share, yes. um, drop some pearls of wisdom and just talk about success and what that looks like, you know, as we are going through our life and the importance of kind of making sure that we're keeping God first in this process, oh, because good. that is the ultimate goal, right? For us to live this happy, long lived life. And I think that it definitely has a lot to do with how you define what success and happiness looks like for you. That's true. Um, so I am a member of Just Christ Ministries, long time member. Yes. Um, I am a member of the board. And um, one of the reasons why I decided to step into a board position was first I was asked to do so, right? Because you have to be invited. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason why I stepped into a leadership position is because I've always looked for opportunities to kind of sharpen my leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And if you've never had an opportunity to move a bunch of volunteers on <laughs> one goal, um, I would highly recommend if you take that opportunity to be on a board because it is quite interesting yes. looking over to my fellow board member, hey, yeah. um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot it's a lot of work that has it to be is, done and it's a so. lot different when we're, we're on the board right it is it is <laughs> we're, we're about god's business i'm yes. telling you that that's for sure but has amazing leadership skills on the board she's like no we're not doing that <laughs> i'm sorry pastor chandra yeah. no yes well i don't have a lot of friends when i'm on that <laughs> other side but it's okay because uh you know 
make sure that we do everything in decency and in order Amen. as much as possible. Um, so as in addition to being a member and serving on the board, um, I also serve on the board of Ring of Hope, which is really exciting. I'm a board member there. Um, and, you know, several other boards that I've had an opportunity to sit on, those two being the ones that are really consuming a lot of my time right now. Um, but when again, when thinking about kind of success and what success means. I think it is a personal conversation that you have with yourself about where are you trying to go and what are you trying to do? Mm -hmm. And um, also just tapping into those, those gifts that God has given you. Yeah. And so that was one of the things that at a very early age, I kind of made sure that I've tried to figure out mm -hmm. like, you know, God, why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? Uh -huh. What's my real purpose here? And then once you tap into that and God reveals that to you, then you lend your gifts yes. to the kingdom. Amen. It's just really that simple. I know it sounds like super, you know, uh, fantastical when you talk about it, but it's really that simple yeah. and God will give you a platform in order to perfect your gift, mm -hmm. whatever that gift is. Um, I work as a, um, a mentor, um, and one of the thing and a coach. And one of the things that I talk to young people, especially those that are going into the workforce about is really how to tap into your passion. Mm -hmm. How do you find those things that you're passionate about? What are you passionate about besides shoes? I'm going to take that off the list. <laughs> I absolutely was about to say I shoes. I know you was. No, I was. <laughs> I love shoes. Anybody who knows me knows I love shoes. So I'm going to digress from shoes. Um, I'm very, very passionate about young people as you are. And yes. just seeing um, it's really important to me that they develop mm -hmm. and not to look like somebody else. I don't need them to mimic another young people. It's about... Um, pulling out of them what God has put in them. Yes. And kind of what you said, understanding what your gifts are and lending them. I mean, in the whole program, a lot of times you see the kids, if they think, oh, this is a cool kid and everybody pays this kid attention, some of them sometimes gravitate towards that personality and they yeah. try to become that person because they think, oh, you're cool. Everybody likes you. I want everybody like me. And I'm like, no, that's the absolute wrong thing to do. And where you can admire that person getting that type of attention or people that that person just has a level of influence, but they can use it negatively or positively. That's true. And so just having those kids understand that you're somebody special, mm -hmm. just the way God created you. So if we have one kid who just absolutely just loves to draw, you know what I mean? He, and he's like, I'm good at it. And one day he asked me, he was like, Hey, can I knit? And I was like, I don't know how to teach. I don't know how to show you how to knit. He was like, but YouTube teaches you everything. And he's <laughs> extremely unique in his way. He's one of those that will not gravitate towards, you know, what somebody else that's extremely popular is doing. So that's my passion. That's one of my, yeah. just making sure I Absolutely. can help them pull out or recognize what's in them. So, doggone it, you got to lead me at yeah. some point. So I want to make sure you get and that I out. And I promise you, I kind of do this exercise a lot with mm -hmm. um, w working in, as a coach. I ask people to just identify something that they would love to do. Like, mm -hmm. what is the one thing that you just love doing? And um, it don't matter how crazy it sounds, uh -huh. but just like fill in the blank on that one thing that you love yes. to do. And once you fill that blank in, like I love, if somebody was to pay me to sleep, I promise you, I would <laughs> sleep. I would be the best sleeper ever. If I could get paid to do that, I really enjoy a good nap. I'm telling you, <laughs> that's I like do one like of that. your keys to success. I'd be is. very successful with yes. sleep. You can get, you need to get good rest. <laughs> Trust me. But definitely. So, one of the things that um, it was a, a time in my life where I was kind of in between um, I was I was working full time and I knew that I wanted to get a second job. And I was like, I, I felt like I had like zero skills. I was mm -hmm. like, I can't braid hair. I don't know how to do nails. Mm -hmm. I don't want to clean nobody's house. I don't you know, like I have these all these things that I didn't want to do. And mm -hmm. I said, I just need somebody to pay me to talk. Yes. I said, who would pay? Do people pay people to talk? And I said, all the time. <laughs> people get paid to talk all the time. Yes. And so that was the first thing I said was like, let me figure out how to get paid to talk. Mm -hmm. Right. And and who is going to pay me to talk? And what is that going to look like? And I'm telling you, God just started lining up those wow. things. And, you know, the first thing I started doing was working in call centers because people that work in call centers talk. They, they pay you to talk. I was like, this is perfect. I never knew you worked at call centers. I but... did work at several call centers. Wow. Now, I did not like doing any of the selling, but anytime I could just call you and have a conversation and all the rest of that. So I said, God, I don't want to do sales. I mm -hmm. want to just take, like, calls coming inbound. Mm -hmm. And I remember going for the interview 
And um, I was working at a call center taking golf reservations. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I really loved it. And, you know, and, you know, a couple of times the supervisors were just coming around and they were like, you really like doing this. And I was like, well, people are calling in to make golf reservations. I'm talking to people from across the country. And, you know, you... I'm learning all this stuff about Mm -hmm. golf. I knew nothing about golf at the time, but Uh you know, it was very interesting. And then they said, Hey, would you like to be a trainer? Now look in the back of my mind, I've always had this dream to be a college professor. Uh Right. So I was like, God, really, what I really want to do is figure out how do I move myself to a place where I can become a college professor because Mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. And so I said, sure. I'll be a trainer Uh because you know, there it is. Absolutely. On the ground training, getting it right there. Yeah. And so, you know, I moved into training. And um, then I remember looking and I was looking for my next great opportunity. That's what I called it when I'm kind of just perusing. Uh-huh. And I saw um, something that said, we're looking for a college professor <laughs> to teach customer service. Ah, stop. And I was, all I was doing was customer service in the call center. Exactly. And so as soon as I went in the interview, they were like, you're perfect. Mm-hmm. You're a trainer. You got call service experience. Yes. You know how to talk about customer service. We're going to hire you as a professor. And I was like, get oh, out of here. Look at God. <laughs> Full circle. Full circle. And that's one of the things that, you know, really, I think some of those keys to success is like tapping into those things that you yes. really like doing and then lending that to ministry so that's mm-hmm. really important I remember what do you mean what do you mean and, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because pastor at some point was um I mean I think I have taught probably everything at this church at some point yeah. so there was a time where we needed uh Sunday school teachers because that's why I, that's when my foundation started mm-hmm. in Sunday school and not for adults Sunday school for the kids <laughs> Because that was so much easier for me, yes. right? Because I said, look, if I can tell the little bit of stories I know in the Bible to these young kids, they're going to think I'm just amazing, yes. right? And so I started with working with the children, and they were amazing. Mm-hmm. And I worked with the three- to five-year-olds. So I didn't even start with the preteens wow. or the oldest. I really started with the babies. And so it was amazing to be able to work with them and spend time with them. And then Pastor said, well, I want you to start teaching Sunday school for the adults. <laughs> adults. And I said... Okay, so that's a little bit more, you know, studying and getting mm-hmm. into the word mm-hmm. and knowing what you're talking about and sharing your story. But look, mm-hmm. all of this was making me comfortable in these mm-hmm. kind of settings, right? To be able to get up on stage. I've had a number of jobs where I've had to address large numbers of people, mm-hmm. right? And so you got to kind of get over that stage fright Absolutely. of being able to do that. Um, but all of this started in the church. Mm. My foundation of the work that I do started here. Um, I wanted to learn more about finance. Mm-hmm. The reason why I started working in the finance room. Uh-huh. I'm a wizard behind it now. <laughs> can, do, can do you a financial statement. Can yes, do, ma'am. You know, can balance the checkbook, know how to take care of the accounts. But all of that comes from just simply volunteering your service and time and putting those things that God, those gifts that God gives you, giving them back to the kingdom. That's really good. I feel like people should really think about, like, it's so many people feeling like they can't do anything. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, yes, I've taught and I've worked with the babies, but I've also been on the cleaning crew. Mm-hmm. So I've cleaned the church. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been part of that committee. So enough, you can be a servant, whatever that servant looks like. I've been on a welcome committee. Mm-hmm. I've been serving coffee yes, to people, yes, signing people yes, in. Yes, I yes. taught new membership. Wait, I'm going through my whole <laughs> itinerary. Yes. I taught new membership <laughs> class at some point um, when we needed somebody to do that. And so, I mean, really thinking about, you know, leveraging those things. Mm-hmm. Now, I really love to sing. And I and I did, was on the praise and worship team, and I totally enjoyed that um, experience being on the praise and worship team. I mean, you but, you know, like, it um, takes, I'm telling you, but that takes a come to rehearsal. Come that takes a commitment. (laughs) If you are not willing, at one point it was like we need to start taking voice lessons. I said it is time for me to get off of the praise and worship team. I'm done. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It was it was an experience. You know Um, what I hear? What I hear while you're talking is the scripture: "Seek ye first the kingdom." Yes. You know, and when you do that, when you're concerned about God's business first, and and that's what I hear you saying. I mean, God has ultimately blessed you and he's used you in such major capacities. But what I hear you saying is you first sought the kingdom and you did what God wanted you to do first. And then it just spilled over into where it became a super blessing for you. You chose to use your gifts, lend them to the Lord so that you'd be a blessing to his people. And then he allowed those same gifts to become a blessing to you. And also applying biblical principles. Absolutely. You know, especially with giving. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of what the Bible talks about, 
is so counterintuitive to how we live mm -hmm. in this world. And so you really have to think about it from a, a whole different space and place, yes. right? So the whole idea around giving to receive and being mm -hmm. a cheerful giver and figuring out the ways that you can give. Like one of my passions is also getting a really good deal. I love to shop. Yes. And sometimes I'm shopping for we other people. I'm shop. like, right. I, I, I'll bring somebody a bag. Like, look what I found. And I'll be sale. so grateful when I get a little bag. <laughs> look what, look. She at the point where anytime I bring a bag into the church, she yes, thinks it's for her. It's I not do. always for her. But definitely I love to like get a good deal. And if I look at something and I'm like, this is not going to fit me, I am still going to buy it and yes. give it to somebody else. And because I, always I hope it's definitely my size. love that feeling of being able to just give to somebody else. Yeah. It is definitely a blessing to be a giver and yeah. figuring out the ways that you can actually give to other people. What are some of those ways that you can lend your, your gifts and to give God gives us so we can give to yeah. other people. That's always says, um, he, he makes us a blessing to be a blessing. Yes, yes. And God is not going to come down from heaven to That's give somebody right. something. That's he is right. going to give you the resource to give to somebody else. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, I will lend my resources, whatever talents and gifts that God gives me, for free 99. Yes. So when people call me and they want things and they want me to do something, I am not always looking at an opportunity to make a quick dollar off of it. But I'm telling you, when you find your, set, your space your place in that and you find your space and you find yourself in that place and time, God will really start to elevate you. If that's where you want to go, he will give you those things that you're looking for yes. around those keys to success. I remember listening to someone who said, Faith is believing in something that only makes sense in reverse. So when that. you're looking at it from like right now and you're looking back to where you started. So I'm looking back to me starting with teaching Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I'm looking back to me volunteering yes. in the finance room and then seeing how that has elevated me to next levels yes. within my career. Yes. Um, and so I have had a wonderful career of working in almost every spectrum. So from nonprofit to for-profit yes. to education, to higher education, you know, really finding those opportunities to do so. And I want to encourage people to also embrace your struggles. Yes. You know, That's you good. go through things, God puts you in a place, in a position, you, you have this mountain for you to get over. Mm -hmm. It helps you to build your endurance. It helps you to exercise your faith muscle, but it also gives you a testimony to other people. Amen. And that's what's really important. Um, I was my mother's only child that went to college, but I'm going to tell you when I went to college and got that degree, that broke that chain yes. in my family. Amen. My nieces and nephews have college degrees. Yes. It, it broke it. That was it. That was that, that line of poverty. That was it. When I went and did that and looked back mm -hmm. and just saw how many people I was able to influence with that decision that I made in order to go to college. Super awesome. It's been amazing. Awesome. A lot of them have surpassed me, you know. Nieces, nephews, yes. great nieces, yes. nephews. We got, we got doctors in yeah. the family and lawyers coming up. But that's, Super that awesome. is a blessing because it was great to be able to see that. And because of that, I really have a desire to continue to close the achievement gap for students of color in, mm -hmm. in, in under-resourced neighborhoods. So that's amazing. really the work that I enjoy doing. That's mm -hmm. really the work that I put my effort towards doing. Well, talk and a little bit about that. What, what does that so look like for you? That, so, you know, looking at how do you make systematic changes in systems to ensure that students of color get that opportunity, mm -hmm. right? As a first generation student, I can speak to other students about the importance of getting an education and the doors that that opened for me mm -hmm. and the importance of walking into that. And it's never too late to do that. So even if, you know, whatever state space and place that you are in your life, I have friends that are, you know, 40 and 49 and 50 years old going back to school wow. to get their degree. So it is never too late if that's, you know, what you have as far as the things that's going to make you happy. So again, finding that passion, mm -hmm. you know, what is that thing that you just love to do? Mm -hmm. And then think about who's going to pay you to do that, yes. you know, because somebody will pay you. If you can find somebody to pay you for your passion work, mm -hmm. that's amazing. You know, and we all have different gifts that we bring. And it's just even thinking about the house of Just Christ Ministries. Mm -hmm. And if we, you know, how we are able to tap into the talents and gifts that we have in the house. Mm -hmm. We have nurses and firefighters mm -hmm. and plumbers and teachers and 
preachers and, you know, social workers and probation officers and like all of the things that we have in the house, we should never be, we have politicians and lawyers. Like I'm just starting to like, just go over my head. Bankers and, you know, all the professions, engineers, all the professions that people have. Yes that we have in the house, there is no reason for us to have a lack. That That is is the purpose of us all coming together to bring our intellectual property, to bring our passions and bring that to the house. That's really good, Auntie Freda. I I mean, I didn't really think about that Mm -hmm. until you just said it. I mean, everything we need, everything we need is in this house already. It is. Everything. And if we would make the decision to lend our gifts to the Lord, yes. everybody's need will be met yes. in this house. And, in this house. And it'll spill over outside of this house, right? Because once you realize that it's in you and God is using it for other people as well as yourself, that compassion kind of gets pulled on. Mm-hmm. And you find yourself like, okay, I guess I will. I, I give you so I, – I also like to give. I love to share things with people. So on yesterday, there's a group of people that are in town. And I was like, hey, have you had had any Chicago food yet? He's like, no. (laughs) So the Lord was like, well, since you're going to ask, then make sure you go make sure they have some. So we talked about pizza. They had Italian fiesta, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Yum. And yum, yum. (laughs) And so I was leaving out of the building, um, and the two, a gentleman and a young lady was at the desk serving people. And he said, you didn't bring us no pizza. And I was like, mm, you want some pizza? And he was like, yeah. I was like, so like a whole pizza or like a slice? Right. <laughs> and he was like, I, I just want a cheese slice. And so his counterpart was sitting next to him, and he, she was like, well, I'll take a cheese slice. And she was like, are you really going to go get us a slice of pizza? And I was like, yeah. You know, and, and it amazed me that, you know, that still shocks people. Yeah, it does. That somebody will take the time to care enough about you to, I mean, it's a simple request. Mm-hmm. It only took 10 minutes of my time because the pizza is already hot and ready. Yeah. You know, so you just run in there, you grab a couple of slices and you run back. It was literally 15 minutes of my time. But it's taking those opportunities mm-hmm. to really think about how do you become a resource for other people. Amen. And sometimes that means taking you out of your comfort mm-hmm. zone, making you stop in your, in your, in your, in your steps of where you were going, but really just look at, and I'm telling you, if this is something that you desire to do, please don't say it unless you want to do this. Because as soon as you ask God to use you, he is going to. Yes, Do you Lord. understand what I'm saying? As soon as you say that out of your mouth, like, Luke, you know what, God? I want to, you know, I was walking around and I used to be like, God, make me the lender and not the borrower, God. You know, I'm speaking that word into my life, yes. right? And then when people start calling me the borrower, I said, well, what's happening right now? He said, didn't you just say make you the lender and not the borrower? I said, I sure did. Okay, God, well, okay. Okay. You know, but you definitely have to put yourself in those positions. Use me, God. Mm -hmm. And then he started using you for other people. And you, you know, sometimes what God be asking me to do, I'm like, I I don't think I I asked for that. It wasn't, mm, you recall this being on my request list. But God puts you in positions to be resources to other people. And you should really take those opportunities to do so. You know, I know people that will, you know, I have literally given my shoes off my feet to Mm. people. And, you know, me and God had a long conversation about that because some of them shoes I didn't want to give away. But, but God. But God. But God. You know, because sometimes you think about the attachment that we have to stuff and to things. You know, there was a time, you know, in my life where I had no vehicle. You know, people were picking me up. I was on the buses and trains. I have I have rode the green limousine, you know, numerous of times, still have a venture card in my bag, Mm -hmm. you know. So there have been times when I have been without and God has blessed people to be like, Freddie, you don't have no car? Uh And I'm like, no, I don't have a car. Let me give you a car. And that's not Let good. me give you a car. Yes. Who's who does that? Right. Who does that? I'm like, look at God. Uh-huh. Or when I'm saying I need a vehicle, and people are like, let me let me connect you to somebody who has yeah. a vehicle right in your price range, right what you're looking for. You know, so God will. When you start to work in your passion and do those things that you love doing, mm-hmm. God will bring the resources that you need to survive with you it. You got and a summer car now, right? I now. do. <laughs> I do. God is faithful, guys. God is amazing. He is faithful. He is amazing. Yes, he is. And, and you know, and you know what? I think that, you know, 
also just making sure that you put those things, those desires of your heart, Amen. that you put them out there and let God know this is the desire of my heart. This is what I want. Amen. This is the kind of life that I want to live. This is the kind of position that I want to be in. But it takes work. It's a and a lot of it does require you to apply those biblical principles. I have been a giver, but also a tithe payer. Amen. And you know what? I pay tithes based on what I want to earn, not based on what I earn. That's good. But you know, that took a very much, that took me to get that that was a very mature decision mm -hmm. and it was hard to get to but I told God I wanted to push myself to that limit to give not what I'm making but what I desire to make That's good. and you know actually it, because you're only giving ten dollars of every hundred that don't really come out to be a lot much more than mm -hmm. what you're giving believe it or not if you're thinking about you know what God I really desire to make this amount of money start tithing mm -hmm. tithing that amount of money to just Christ Ministries or whatever church that you're involved Amen. in, um, I would highly recommend that you become a faithful tie payer because it's not about what leave the church to decide and make the, the financial decisions of what they need to do. Make sure that, you know, God is holding them accountable. That's right. You know, God holds us accountable as board members on how we spend God's money. Right. Yeah. And we take that very seriously, mm -hmm. but I would never put my money into a church and then doubt what they're doing with the money mm -hmm. or question about that. You're giving because God has given to you and he has said to you, give 10%. Give 10%. That's, right. that's your, re that's your that's only your, responsibility. That's your only responsibility. What happens after you give it. That's it. Is in the hands of the people that's who deal correct. with the finances. They have to, they will be responsible for that. But God says, give your 10%. And I'm telling you, God will open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you do not have room enough to so receive. So what I think I hear you saying is that's part of your keys to success. Absolutely. Huh. Biblical principles. Amen. I mean, I so live on the world. it's not just your college degree. No. It wasn't just. Let me tell you, that college degree had me unemployed <laughs> for 18 months. Two college degrees. At one point in my life, I was at the place like, okay, God, what is happening here? Mm -hmm. You know, like I was really listening. Like, you know, you have, if you have, have ever had those moments in your life where you have been like completely broke and you just looking for money everywhere. Mm -hmm. Have you mm -hmm. had any yeah, of those? Uh, under the couch. Right. You look at, under, you, you, your head is always <laughs> down. You like, you know, you patting yes. on your, you, you going into old clothing that you ain't worn in a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, you opening up all your mail. Cause yeah. you know, sometimes, you know, <laughs> yeah, nice little check coming in the mail. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> At that moment when I was underemployed and I was doing, you know, everything I could to make a honest dollar, mm -hmm. um, I was having a lot of conversation with God because I did not understand why with my multiple degrees mm -hmm. and my network of people and my experience that I've had 20 plus years mm -hmm. in, why was I still not employed in the position of my choosing, mm -hmm. right? But it is really not really, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. It is really applying those biblical principles. I was in the line at the food pantry. Yeah. I love those. I love the people from the food pantry. I love the generosity. Yes. I love the fact that we have a food pantry to be able to give to people who are in Amen. need, you know? So I was there. I, I was on public assistance. I took advantage of all of those things. I found resources that I needed in order to help me move through. And you know what? When people gave, I kept my, I didn't turn down anything but my collar mm -hmm. at that point. Amen. I was making sure that I was allowing people to give because that was a that was a season where God said you need to rest you need to rejuvenate you need to think about what's going on now you need to reallocate your funds like I had to really downgrade my entire lifestyle because I wasn't making the money that I was making you know in the job that I had and I was laid off and I didn't expect the layoff to come so I really wasn't quite prepared for that when it happened okay. but but God but, but God. God and you have those moments where you go through that, mm -hmm. and now I can talk to somebody about how to survive 18 months of under, of wow. being under and unemployed, right? So my conversation to them is not not what I think, what I heard, what I read, but it's my experience. Mm -hmm. And that's how we encourage each other, yes. one to another, those testimonies. But guess how we get a testimony? Through a test. Through a test. That's it. No test. No test. No, no testimony. testimony. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, God. it's really that simple it's really that simple yes it comes really that simple and faith yeah you know i i i talk a good game of faith mm -hmm. but it's when you have to exercise oh, that muscle i'm telling you 
when God is like, hold your tongue, don't don't Ooh, say that. Mercy, God. Don't look that way. Help, Lord. Yes, help, Lord. <laughs> help, sweet baby Jesus, on a good day. <laughs> yes. So yes. you really have to think about those times. So when 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 I'm encountering those times, I'm speaking the word into my life because yes. I'm saying to myself, "This too shall pass." It, it shall, according to the word of according God. According to the word of God, mm-hmm. I, I am the head and not the tail. Yes. You know, yes. I am above and not beneath. Amen. I am the lender and not the borrower. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You know, speaking those things into my life because in the end, I will win. You win. You know, you win. because when you're in the midst of your trial and your tribulation and you're going through your your um, desert moments or whatever you call those moments and you're in the midst of your storm, sometimes you can't see on the other side of that. Amen. And I depend on people to tell me, I've been there. This is how I got out. Yes. But you know what? I only call people who is going to speak the word into my Amen. life That's because really there have been point. times where I have been truly depressed about something or down about something and not being able to see my way through. And I call those people that push me into a praise. Amen. They were like, I don't hear no praise going on over there. You ain't, you ain't uh-huh. shouting uh-huh. right now. Uh-huh. And I say, you know what? You're right. Yeah. It's going to take a minute. I'm going to shout after I cry, mm-hmm. but I'm going to shout I'm and I'm going to thank God. But you know, you have to really think about, you know, how are you moving through those times in your life? And Amen. even when you look at somebody else and you're thinking, wow, they are really successful. You do not know what that person had you to go through no to do idea. that. Right? You have no idea. And sometimes I'm looking at people and like, okay, God, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want that wilderness part where people had to sleep in their cars. Ooh, you know, Lord. people tell their success stories. They like, I had to sleep in my car. You know, I didn't have no job. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I was, you know, sleeping on somebody else's couch. I ain't had no place to go. You know, and you're like, oh, my Lord. You know, I was on the streets. I was Absolutely. on drugs. I was this. I was, and he was like, I don't, I don't want that part of the testimony. Uh-huh. I want the other part of the That's testimony, right? right? I'm right. sure we all want that. Right where they are right now, the money right. that they're making, the big beautiful house, not understanding what sacrifices had to be made Absolutely. in order for the thing. Everybody's keys to success look different. It does. This is very, very powerful, you it know, does. Because what all I hear you saying is biblical principles. Biblical, that's all I'm going to keep saying. That's it. My mother told me that success is only said one time in the Bible. Mm. And I said, only once? And she said, the word success is only said one time in the Bible. Really? That's what I said, too. Girl, she she sent me to Google because, you know, you know, of my course. mama would send us to Google. Of course. Um, but she was correct. And I said, well, that is just really interesting because it's like those things that, you know, we are putting in our mind. That's why I said you need to define your mm. success. You need to define what success looks like to you. Amen. You know, and what that is and how you, you know, like all of these things that we are, you know, that, that we are acquiring, these things going to go to waste. They are. Let me tell y'all how a couple of pair of my shoes went bad over COVID. I couldn't believe it. Like they crumbled. straight just dry rotted. I said, this is just not fair. Yes. You know, so... These things that we that we hold so high and that we acquire, they go, they they perish. Absolutely, it is not going to last always. So you really have to think about those things that you hold close and dear and near, mm-hmm. and you know how are you going to ensure that those things remain and sustain you throughout your life? And so a are you lot saying of that, that you should not acquire stuff. Oh, and no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> what are you saying? God will. I, I I honestly believe that God will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. If that is if if stuff is what you desire, God will give it to. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I have been in a place where I've had the money, mm-hmm. where I've had the stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have the happiness on the other side of that, you will never be content. Amen. So, you know, you so have would to that have be that. like, I mean, can, would you consider that success? I mean, I got all this stuff. I have all this money and I'm not happy. Mm. Would, would you define it as success? Because not for me. From, from somebody else's perspective, you clearly look successful. Right. right. You know? They, I would think, oh, Freda can buy whatever she wants. Freda got a beautiful place. Freda has two cars. Freda has this. But you're saying um, if you don't have the happiness and the contentment to go with it, then it's not really success. It is not. And that's I think that's a really good point of thinking about the, the stuff that you see that people have. Mm-hmm. You know, that is not the, you know, I, I remember... You know, when during those times when you don't have a lot of money mm-hmm. and you say, oh, if I had the money, I would buy X, Y, and Z. Uh-huh. And then you get the money and you say, it, that's not worth it. You still don't go buy that. <laughs> Absolutely. I would 
I said, how much was that? Uh, those Gucci shoes? Mm-hmm. I don't want those shoes. No, no, Absolutely. thank you. You know how much? What I could do for X, Y, Z amount of money? I know that's okay. Because you know what? You become wiser with your finances Absolutely. when you get to a certain place in, in time. And I'm not saying don't splurge on yourself and do those things that make you happy, but really make some conscious decisions about you know making sure one of one of the things that I'm a huge advocate for, especially for people of color, color is to get life insurance. Yes, Lord. get some life insurance, people. Please. If I go to we're another GoFundMe page, we'll I'm going to be sad it. about that. But we'll, yes, we'll do a segment. we do. We do need to do a segment. $35 on that. a month to get you $50,000 worth of insurance, depending on your age and sometimes your health. But it's not that. It's really not. You All you need to bury yourself or, you know, a family member to bury is about $10,000. That's about right? it. That's about you know, it. And, and it, it does it not. It relieves your family of unnecessary stress. So it that's does. a really good point. And you know what? If you have children, you start with them as, you know, really young. That then you're paying pennies on the dollar. Life. You're paying pennies on the dollar for the rest of your life. life. And it, it stays that's the right. same the whole time. That and is policy. Correct. And then that it ends up paying for itself. We're just uninformed about a lot we of things. Are. So, we are. You know, our definitions of success become something that ultimately puts us in a space of being miserable. Yes. You know what I mean? And the Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich, rich and, and addeth, addeth no, no sorrow. sorrow. Addeth no right? sorrow. So your success, you should not be around here moping and poping, head down, can't breathe, I'm tired, I'm frustrated. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. And they sorrow. are yea and amen. Are yea and amen. Can you say you know that what? again? The blessings of the Lord are yea yay and, amen. and amen. And yes. it's God is saying yea and we're saying amen. That because is correct. Because we agree with the fact that God is choosing to say yes. And not only that, but what God has for you it's is for you. for you. So when I see people in spaces and places where, you know, I am rejoicing with you. If this is where you want to be, amen. I have no desire you know, to have the titles. I've had them. I've been in those spaces Mm -hmm, and places, mm -hmm. right? I was like, I don't, you know what, God, thank you for the opportunity, but I care not to be in that kind of space and place anymore in my career. What I heard you say is when you're successful, you're content. Oh, yes. You're you're very okay. You're comfortable in the skin that you're in. Um, and, and, And I'm telling you, God will do it for us, but it's the biblical principles that's going to get us there we really have to think about that and it and it means we have to be obedient i mean and sometimes god will tell you to do something that is really catapulting you to the success that you're looking for and you don't understand it in that moment it's just really important to be obedient yes if god tells you to go jump up and down five times that might not be no real real reason just go jump up and down five times i mean what what's gonna hurt Mm -hmm. and later you might realize that you avoided a blood clot or something you, we, you never we know. just don't know why god is doing or saying what he's saying sometimes he's checking our faith level and when you become in tune with your spirit mm-hmm. and your spirit life and you're in tune with that voice in the holy spirit that is a level of maturity where you stop questioning those things Amen. i was recently in dc and um <clears throat> for work and you know one of the things that i asked god for i said you know what god I love to travel, love to travel. on somebody else's dime. Yes. Can we do that, God? Can Amen. we do that? And he did it. Yes, he did. So I'm traveling for work. I'm in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> and our, the hotel that we were staying at was at the Capitol. And I had this long layover um, before my flight left. And I'm just enjoying outside. It's a beautiful day. I'm sitting outside. And my spirit said, you need to go to the airport right now. And I somehow looked at my, I said, God, I'm going to be there like three hours early. Mm -hmm, I said, mm -hmm. but okay. You know, I was like, maybe I can get some work done. I can have a little lunch. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and go. And sure enough, I'm sitting in the airport. By the time I land and get back home, I found out the same time that I would have been trying to get to the airport, they had to evacuate the Capitol and everything was gridlocked. I probably wouldn't even made it to the airport, let alone made my plane. So sometimes you just have to be obedient to those little things. When you're, when it drops into your spirit and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, if it's requiring you to move, then move. Move. And in my 
I, you know, people know I'm directionally challenged. So sometimes I go in the wrong direction when I'm driving. Huh, sometimes I think I feel like it's God sending me in those directions. So uh-huh. I just, I just blame it on that. Mm-hmm. But you know, it is. You may be averting uh, an accident, Amen. going different. You know, like don't don't allow yourself because you see yourself veering off into another direction. If your spirit is leading you into that direction, yield to it. Yield to it. Yield to it. So if you had some points that you could leave with the people on tonight, yes. just a few points that would help guide or at least encourage Mm. somebody to kind of move in the forward direction to um, that success, their personal keys, their personal success, what would they be? So definitely biblical principles, right? The Bible says, write the vision and make it plain. People, if you do not have a journal, get one, start writing stuff down in your phone, post it up. Like one of the beautiful things, you know, I went to to visit one of my nieces and she had like all these verses and Bible verses and encouraging words and what she wants to do and affirmations just, you know, plastered up all around her. And I said, this is wonderful. You want to make sure that you keep that around you, you know, write it down, make it plain. Um, I was just listening to believe it or not Steve Harvey and I'm not giving him any uh, accolades or anything (laughs) but he said you should try to write down 300 things you want to get done in the course of one year wow three I was like 300 that's a lot he said but you write it down then you start working towards that and I'm a big believer in small successes trying to get to a milestone right so you can't say I want to go to school but you haven't researched the school you haven't applied for financial aid you haven't gone and did a school visit you don't know what school you want to go to you don't know what you want to major in all of those little things are going to help help you get to go to school Ooh. That's one through 10. Right That's there. one through 10 right there. Right. Yes. So you have to think about that as you're trying to reach a goal. Once you double click on that goal, it's a whole bunch of little steps that you have to take in order Amen. to get there. So write, write the vision, make it plain, find out what your passion is, what talent and skill has God given you mm-hmm. and what is your purpose? What are you supposed to be doing? And once you figure that out, lend it to the, the the house of God, lend it back, give it back to God, give your talents back to God, because he will allow you to use those things. And that's going to catapult you to the next level of your career, to your whatever it is you're trying to do, lend it back. Don't charge people for it, because when it's time for somebody to pay you for it, they will. And I, you know, I can go on a whole nother tangent about that, because definitely have a testimony about that. But when it's when it's time, I'm, I'm gonna tell that story, because it's really quick. So let me tell you, when I was underemployed during those 18 months, I got, I decided that I was just going to volunteer for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I reached out and said, Hey, I'm available for guest speakers, whatever you need, whatever you need me to do. I mean, I was doing all kind of crazy stuff. Um, Productive stuff. Let me not say crazy. So someone reached out to me and said, hey, we're looking for a guest speaker. Um, Can you come and be a guest speaker? And I said, sure. And so I went and I was a guest speaker and they said, you know what? The cohort loved you so much. We want you to come back and be a residential training for us. How much would you charge to train us, to train a cohort for a year? And I said, I didn't have a, let me tell you. have a number. I didn't even have a business name. She Mm. said, what's your business name? I said, uh... (laughs) I uh, don't know. <laughs> I said, let me get back to you. Cause she said, I need you to send me an invoice. Can you do a proposal and all the rest of this? Wow. And everything was just coming at me so fast. And I was like, well, okay. So I think I'm about to be a consultant. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, I've had that gig for five years. That's amazing. I have been a residential consultant for United Way AmeriCorps leaders for five cohorts, wow. all because I volunteered one, one time. Day. Yeah. I came and volunteered one time. And remember I said I was looking for somebody to pay me to talk, mm-hmm. right? Guess what they doing? That's Paying it. You to talk. Paying me to talk. That's what they did. That's pay, me to, pay me to tell all these stories and I'll, you know, I'll drop all my pearls of wisdom. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to it. So write the vision. Make mm-hmm. it plain. Write, write it down. Find your passion. Mm-hmm. Lend your passion back to ministry in some kind of shape, form, or fashion. And if it's not ministry, however you volunteer, right? Yeah. Some way where somebody is not char- you are not charging someone to make a meal. You're not charging someone to clean up. You're not charging. You know, we have musicians at Just Christ Ministries that don't get paid. That's right. They just love doing it. They up on this stage. They Amen. come to rehearsal. Amen. They like, we just love doing this. You ain't got to pay us to do this. Some things God has gifts that God has given you. Lend it back. Amen. Lend it back. Everything does not have to have a price tag up on it. So you're writing your vision. You're finding your purpose. You're lending your lending it back. And then you are defining what success looks like for you. From that, 
you know, and you're applying biblical principles. Amen. You're becoming a, you're a giver. Figure out ways for you to give. Even when you're lending your intellectual property, you're giving. That is a way of giving. You know, find ways for you to continue to be a giver. Find ways for you to continue to do that because that is going to take you to the next step. And, you know, one thing that I tell when I'm mentoring is like become a collector of people. You know, build oh, your good. network. Become a collector really of good. people. This is how you're going to move to the next level as you're networking with other people, learning what they're doing, spending time with them. You know, they're going to help you move to the next level, especially if you're thinking about your career pathways and things of that nature. So, you know, just thinking about it from that, like I am definitely one of those people and speak the word into your life. You do not, you know, me and Pastor Sean, we just got Bible verses coming out of <laughs> us, right? It's just oozing out. Amen. You know why? Because we speak them all the time. That's right. That's you right. have to start to speak the Bible, speak biblical principles into your life, even if it is the simple, you know, you don't have to be a, I'm not asking you to be a biblical scholar, mm -hmm. but some of the things, just go to the word, find, find those favorite passages that you like that encourage you find a song that you can sing to. I'm going to tell you one time I was, I was at a very low place. I just did not know what God was saying. And I listened to one song literally like. 25 times yeah. I just kept pressing rewind I'm gonna listen to it again Man. I'm gonna listen to it again and each and every time I, I felt like I was getting more and more out of it but I had to just keep listening to it again so find something that is going to encourage you during those times and know that because we are believers does not mean that we're not going to encounter bad times that's right in fact we might encounter worse times that's right because the enemy is after you Maybe. do not underestimate that Amen. right so find those opportunities where you're speaking the word into your life and you're living on those biblical principles. And that is going to take you to the next level. You can define your own success. Success is what it looks like to you. That's right. Nobody else around you. You know, your goals is what it looks like to you. And don't let anybody define that for you. And that's going to take you. That's going to take you there. Those are those are my pearls of wisdom. Amen. Through this, through this uh, time that we share together. Brother. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I mean, so much information. I mean, and, and it's practical stuff. It's stuff that we can actually take and apply, things that we can actually do. What impresses me so much about you, Auntie Freda, is that, listen, I know this lady, and this is her life. This is like real, this is not um, something she prepared or put together for Wednesday night. This is how she lives. And does it mean she doesn't face challenges? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But when she does, it's that faith walk that kicks in. It's the word of God. It's those biblical principles. It's those scriptures that you've heard over and over again, the ones that carry you through. And once again, you don't need to know a whole lot of them by memory, right? Just those ones that you can pull on, that you can in a yes. moment, just pull it out of yourself. And if you think you need something deeper, just go open the Bible and start reading it and speaking it out of the word. Yes. If you don't know it, it's there. All you got to do is open the 66 books, a whole lot to choose it's from. It's a whole lot to choose from. You know, if it's pain, if it's hurt, if it's depression, if it's God, I don't know. If it's God, there's too much. If it's God, I want more. Whatever it is, thank you, God. Praises. If you don't even, if you don't know how to praise him for what he's brought you through or the successes that he's allowed you to see and live then you get in the word and start praising just praising from the word of yes, god right yes open the book of psalms that's right? it that's and it. go to just reading it i'm telling you it's a whole wealth of praises in there so you start to fortify your spirit yes. you get that thing inside of you spirit soul and body don't ever forget that yes. it's super important that we understand that and this is some show enough wisdom right mm -hmm. it's just Little nuggets, little pearls that, but I'm telling you, if you apply it to your life today, like right now, it will start to work for you. You know, time ain't long. And that's, that's right. So it's if whatever God says. And it is the application. It, you it's have the application. to do it. You, you have, have to, to do apply it. it. Whatever God said you would be, whatever God said you would do, he's not man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he needs to repent. So if he said it, it has to come to pass. We might as well line up. Yes. So, so that we're not struggling to get to this. You have an, the Bible talks about each day got a trouble. Yes. I mean, it has its own, it's troubles, its own troubles, you know? So, so know that even when you're doing the right thing and you're moving in that full day, listen, that stuff going to come because the enemy is always on his yes. J O B. Just be patient, get prostrate, put yourself in position in the space that you in for God to lead you into the direction that he said for you to go. 
don't look at somebody else and and how they became successful. I mean, Pastor and I have a different testimony. Yes. And I'm telling you, it's a straight grind. And people look at it and sometimes, trust me, you don't want that? Mm-hmm. It's, it, listen, and it's sacrifice. And it's not even something that breaks me down. It's what I enjoy because I know that it's the space that I'm supposed to be in. So even when I'm tired, don't get weary and well doing. Just keep on doing it. Do season your reap if you faint not. Yes. See that? See how that word just See come how that about just you? Came, just, just, just come blah, about blah, blah, you. Blah, 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 blah. Come about you. It'll come on out to you. Yeah, and, and it's because God has been so amazingly good to us. Yes. It's not, but he has no respect of person. God wants you to get to your space of success, but you have to, like Freda said just a little bit ago, you got to know what that is. You got to get in tune with the Holy Spirit. You have to apply biblical principles. Yes. You have to trust the Lord. And you just got to speak those things that be not as though they, they were. Are, yes. Right? And in all that getting. Uh, get an understanding. Get an understanding. Hallelujah. And all that getting. I'm telling you. I don't know if any of y'all posted something in the chat because y'all know <laughs> I don't do all that social media stuff. So pass be the one over here. Woo, thank you. Hallelujah. I see the hearts. So, I mean, if you've enjoyed this little bit of wisdom, because I mean, it's so much more that can be poured out to just share and encourage people. If you've enjoyed it, just hit a like. Yes. If you've enjoyed it, share it. I mean, because even if it doesn't bless you, maybe it'll bless somebody else. I encourage you, Just Christ Ministries, all I guess, members in the house, listen, begin to share the <laughs> word of God. Begin, I mean, God has, I mean, he allowed JCM to be able to go right into this whole pandemic. He blessed us. We were able to just move right with it. And so I know that that the Lord, God's hand is on this house. Yes. So if you believe that, I'm just encouraging you once again, it's for you, but it's also for somebody else. These personal keys to success that Freda just shared, they're powerful, they're simplistic, they're easy to apply, and it moves you to a, a space of hope. Yes. Get you into a space of hope. It, you know, if God did it for her, he can do it for you. I mean, and it's just little simple things that she said. And it's just like aha moments. Yes. I'm sitting here going, oh, my gosh, that but is so, so awesome. But it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, And if shoot. he did it before, he'll, he'll do, do it, it again. again. He'll I'm do telling it again. you. You got to start speaking that into your life. Make that a part of your vocabulary yes. as you are moving through. Because we all go through trials and tribulations. Amen. If I could tell you some of the things. Man, you wouldn't believe me. Wouldn't believe I, you it. You wouldn't believe it. But you know what? But God. But God. And when I got to the place and space in my life, when I had that, I don't know, mm -hmm. spirit, mm -hmm. when that was my answer, because mm -hmm. a lot of times you're in that space and place in your life where you're like, I don't know. I and don't if know. you're there, it's okay. It is okay for you to be there and just say, I don't know, but God. Mm -hmm. but and God. allow God to direct your path mm -hmm. and show you what to do. And speak to you. You find yourself in spaces and places. Turn off the television. Yes. Go into the bathroom. Sit in the bathtub. Go into your car. Yeah. Go for a walk. Wherever those spaces and places, it's just you and God. Mm -hmm. When you get, you, you know, you looking looking for God to be carrying, you know, walking with you and he carrying you. Mm -hmm. Those times and spaces and places when he's speaking with you, yeah. allow yourself to be there. Because God will give you those keys. He will give you those things. He will connect. He will make those divine connections. Yes. I'm telling you, he will put you in spaces and places. He will put you at tables with kings and queens. Yes, if will. that's what your desire is, yeah. he will give it to you. I have been in spaces with people and I'm like, oh, I had to stop sometimes and be like, oh my God, do you know who's in the room? Amen. Right? Amen. Do you know? Do you Man, I'm telling you, God is amazing. Yes. And there is nothing special about me. I did not get the microphone because I did something special or because it's my birthday. I'm telling you, <laughs> Pastor was in a clutch and was looking for somebody to do <laughs> Wednesday night Bible study. And he said, I know I can depend on Freda to do this. <laughs> and so that's why I'm here. Amen. But this was not, um, it was divine. It was divine, yeah. right? Because this is what's supposed to happen on this space and this place and this time. And if you have a testimony and things that you want to share, that's what this platform is That's for. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. Amen. 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 So we're going to we wrap go. up because God has been so good and so faithful. So yes. we won't hold you hostage with your time because Fred and I can talk to you for a whole nother hour, right? And I think most people know that. Amen. <laughs> they do. They do. Um. So you know what? I do still want to give someone who might not know Jesus an opportunity to accept them as their personal Lord and Savior, right? He died so that 
we could live. He died so that those personal um, keys to success, he'd be able to share with you. But the only way for us to get those from him, from the Holy Spirit, see, because you have to have accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes. And it's just believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and that he did die and that he was buried and that God raised him from the dead. And if you believe that, if you say that, if you accept that, then you're saved. And guess what? It's the new beginning. Yes. The Bible says, old things pass away. Behold. And behold, all things become new. Yes. Isn't that something? Yeah. What a faithful God. I'm telling you, and if you just go ahead and, and decide that that's something you need to do, if you don't know him, I'm telling you, listen, when I first accepted him as Lord and Savior, just blessings upon yes. blessings. Doors started to open. It was like God began love to that baby, me, and right? baby in Christ moment. Yes, like, yes, gonna love yes. Our own. He going to love our own. Anything yeah. I needed, anything I wanted, anything, any answers yes. I needed. I mean, it was just like he was just right there. And if he didn't speak him audibly to me, then he had somebody yes. answer. And I was like, oh, my God, because he loves us that much. And boy, you know, it's like having your own baby. You hold on to them, you coddle yes. them, you teach them, you guide them, you, you guard them. And so God is so fascinated with us that he gave us his only begotten son yes. so that we'd have this opportunity. So I encourage you, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, this is an opportunity for you to do so. And again, it's just saying, Father God, I admit that I'm a sinner. Yes. But I believe that you sent your son Jesus and that he died and that he was buried, Lord, and that you raised him from the dead yes. such that I could be saved. And if you just said that, like with me, in your heart, out of your mouth, you know what I'm saying? You're saved. You're saved. And nobody can take that from you. And the angels are rejoicing. Yes. Can you believe when one person says that Woo! and confesses and opens their heart to God, the, and all the angels stop yes. rejoicing? Yes. Isn't that something? I can't wait to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's going to be amazing. Amazing. We're going to have like parties all the time. A party. We're just going to all time. be rejoicing forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I mean, walking on streets paved with gold. Yes. And you know how we possess gold down here mm -hmm. right now. It's like super amazing. <laughs> commodity it's like super expensive but we're gonna walk on it yeah. so so don't get caught up in the things and stuff and the cares and affairs of the world man it's so much more for us when we get to the other side but while you're here continue to do continue to do continue continue, continue to do what god has put in your heart continue, to do continue. he will get the desires of your yes, heart yes he will Amen. yes he will you you want to pray auntie Fida? i will yes go ahead and, absolutely and just... father god we just thank you for another opportunity to come together god, yes, god. we thank you for being here in the midst because you said when two or more gather yes. you are here yes. and we just thank you for being here god we thank you for the opportunity to come together and to share our testimonies because we know that this is what encourages us in our christian world god we ask for those that are sitting in this place with us and those that are online experiencing this online God that you continue to touch their heart God speak to them in their quiet places God allow them to get to know who you are to have a relationship with you this is about a relationship between you and God and when you have that relationship he said you will hear my voice and you will know my voice and I will continue to speak with you so I just pray right now the blessings of the Lord upon you as you are making your way into this Christian walk think about those things God is willing and waiting and he wants to have this relationship with you and he wants to give you the desires of your heart so I'm asking that you just take this opportunity don't don't take it upon our testimony we want to hear what you got to say about what God has done in your life and he is going to do it amen so thank you so much for joining us we look forward to seeing you this Sunday service and we'll see you next week for Bible study amen good night good night <laughs>